Let's all follow all right after that. You were a chemistry major. I was. You minored in psychology. I did. How does that equate leading one to become a volleyball coach? And does that help one in the role of a volleyball coach? I think the psychology minor helps me a lot. The chemistry major is zero help at all. <laughs> it's a very long four years. Um, as a player in college, I was good at chemistry, and it came easy to me, and I was getting good grades. Um, and my whole life, my mother was a science teacher, so I was like, oh, I'm going to go to science. And then my senior year, I was doing interviews at pharmacy schools. And I was like, you know, this doesn't feel right. Something, this, this isn't it for me. Um, I'm not done with volleyball. And nothing has made me happier than coaching and being involved with volleyball. So I made the hard jump from pharmacy to volleyball. What's the hardest job going, Mom, I'm not going to be a teacher? Uh, yeah, she loves that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she did. Now you're in your ninth season at Bridgewater, coming off of the most successful year, winning 77 percent of your games last year. Just take a moment and look back to last year, and, and when you think about it, when you talk about it, what, what are the things that come to mind first? I think something that set last year apart from previous seasons is we worked a lot on our culture more so, I think, than we had in previous years. Not just from like the team we actually had, but when we were looking at recruits to bring into our program. We paid a lot more attention to the culture that we were um, cultivating, and so we had to say no to some kids who were great volleyball players because they weren't necessarily a great fit for what we were trying to do. And so I think last year was finally the year where after a couple of seasons of paying attention to that with recruits um, and feeling like we were good enough that I could say no to some kids who could play just because they weren't a good fit, um, I think that that was, was huge. And we had great leadership, um, and just the right kids had the right amount of experience, and I think it was just like a perfect storm of of things that came together for us. Now, we've determined that because you were good last year doesn't mean you're going to be good this year. Absolutely. You're pretty darn good this year. So, But are you seeing direct runoff from last year, the success and the extra practices and this spending more time together as a team? I am. I think that the, the team culture has evolved from last year. We have a lot of different personalities, and we had some strong personalities that have graduated. And so seeing different people step up in the spring season and throughout the summer and now this fall, um, it's a very different team than we had last year, but the culture is still very important in the sense of family and the sense of hard work and the sense of pride in what they're doing every day is still there, but it feels a lot different than it did last year even. So, like everyone says, it's a different season, but um, it seems to be working so far. 11-0, 2-0 in conference play. You play this weekend, won all three games, 3-0. Four straight games you've won three to nothing. So you're pitching shutouts. What's been the, the, the biggest chemistry of the last four games in particular? Um, I think the last four games even, we have gotten, I think everyone everyone on the roster has gotten to play. Um, and so what I think is really special about our program is that we have people on our team that could start for every team in the ODAC right now. And they're choosing to be a part of Bridgewater Volleyball because we, I think we do things the right way. We, we, yeah, I think we do things the right way. So. Even though we're flipping people in and out, we're moving lineups around, and we're giving other people game experience and matches that matter with teams that have taken a set from us before, there's not this feeling of like, ooh, starters versus non-starters. I think that everyone is very cohesive. We do a good job of having people play next to each other in practice. Um, and the team is just, they trust each other. And I think that really matters, and that shows in our scores. Are you seeing it from the sideline when you, when you bring a starter off? You put someone who typically wouldn't be in that role. Are you seeing them turn into the cheerleader and turn into the, to the, uh, the other role for the team? I honestly think our bench is more intense and more <clears throat> exciting when the starters are not in the game because they cheer so hard. Like, <laughs> if you could watch one of our games and our starters are not in, they are the hardest cheers, and they're coming up with ridiculous things that are happening on the sideline, and they give so much energy and so much positive trust and faith to the, the people that are gaining that experience that they already have. Um, it's really cool as a coach to see that happen. That's what you want. The Bridgewater College recruits itself just when, they, when you get them on campus. Getting them there is somewhat of a challenge. And I noticed a lot of your players have not all of them played on the club circuit. Is that the easiest way to go out and find players who fit the chemistry you're looking for now? It is just the way that club volleyball has kind of evolved. Um, people don't really recruit at high school matches much anymore um, because I can go and watch a match and see a very limited number of players, or I can go to a club tournament where there are 500 plus teams and there are 200 courts set up, and I can spend a weekend evaluating hundreds of players. Um, so I think club is definitely, in terms of recruiting, what we focus on the most of our energy and most of our, our resources. Do you still, though, come across that diamond in the rough that doesn't do the club circuit. Yeah, you know, and, you, and how hard is it to find that player? Uh, it's hard. And normally it happens, they'll either reach out to us, um, and it's someone who maybe doesn't play for a great club or doesn't play for a club at all, 
Um, and that's the situation where we would go watch them play in high school, or we invite them to come to like our prospect clinic or a summer camp where we can really get to know them. Because it's hard a lot of times to evaluate how a player will transition from the high school game to the college game. Especially, you know, at the club level, you're playing people who are going to go play Division One, and they're big, and they're powerful, and they're hitting high and jumping hard. Um, and at the high school level, you don't always see that. So it's, it's hard to evaluate how they would look against that kind of competition at the high school level. But we definitely have ways around that. Um, but a lot of times those diamonds in the rough, if they come to us or we have coaches reach out to us that we have good relationships with that think they have someone that can be a good fit. And we certainly have had success from players like that. Um, Deja Booker last year graduated. She was a senior right side for us. And she was someone that kind of fell into our laps. Um, a coach reached out to me and said, hey, did you hear this girl from Roanoke area? Um, and she did not play anywhere that we had seen her before. And she ended up being a great player for us. So with the club, going and watching so many teams play, has that broadened your recruiting base a little? Are you getting into areas because of players coming from different places? How, how, has, that, how has that affected your recruiting? Um, a little bit. It mostly just allows us to be a little bit more efficient with recruiting. Um, so we're, we really get the most of our draw is from Virginia, Maryland, North Carolina, um, some Pennsylvania interest, a little bit of Florida interest, people coming up. There's not a lot of D3 down there. Um, but we are still a very regional school. Um, just having the tournaments set up the way they are allows us to see all of them at the same locations and be a little bit more efficient with that. Uh, you're two, I think two this week. Talk about the first one, I believe, on Wednesday that you've got coming up. Yeah, so we uh, we play Roanoke on Wednesday. Um, that's going to be a really important note at Mac. That's a team that is very, very good. We have one sophomore outside hitter. Um, who, if we can shut her down, I think we're going to be in good shape. But she's a force to be reckoned with. I think she was an all Honorable mention All American last year. Um, she's she's very good, so she's someone we need to pay attention to. Well, best of luck. Thank you for taking time to get out. We appreciate it very much. Aaron Harris from Volleyball.